Okay, for the working drawing, the first thing you're going to need to do is um, create an exploded view. And ideally, you would want your exploded view to have uh, separation between all your parts. Um, and you show how the train assembles. So, for example, you wouldn't want the wheel pulled, you know, I'm going to change this. You wouldn't want this pulled way apart just a little bit of separation between the pieces and you wouldn't want the wheel pulled way out here um, you want to show how the train goes together um, you need to keep this nice and crop tight and um, ideally you wouldn't want the parts touching at all but we might have to compromise that a little bit in order to have it fit on the drawing because we want all of this to fit on a size D drawing Okay, um, so we're going to do a drawing file. Of course, go ahead and put the date. Um, if you have the newer version that has the period, I'm just going to put IED there. And under scale, I want you to put one to one except where noted. Most of your parts will be one to one, though, but there'll be some exceptions. Okay, of course, we say okay. And this drawing sheet is way too small. So we're going to edit the sheet and make it size D which is 22 by 34. Now this will scale perfectly to print half size on our 11 by 17 printer. Um, let's say OK. First view you want to bring in will be the exploded view. And since that was already open actually it was starting to pop up. But you want to make sure that you have the ISO view. Again, if the ISO view you have is not correct, you can always select Change View Orientation and it'll open your file. So the first view you want to bring in is your isometric view. And we want to position that nice and tight in the top right corner of the page, making sure no parts are overlapping the margins. Um, we don't want any projections off of that. Um, we're going to want that view in color, so a couple things we're going to change. Edit view, um, make it in color, and a couple other options. If, you're, if your lines are nice and neat on your explosion, you can keep the trails on. If your lines are crossing each other, you can uncheck show trails under display options. and then that will show all the parts without the trails then. Okay, so that's kind of you have to look at your part and decide uh, if I did a neat, really nice job of doing my my lines I could leave my trails, if not take the trails off. Um, another, the second view you should bring in is the assembled train. And again do an ISO top right or ISO top left. Um, and if I do edit view, of course, we want um, one of the things that sometimes happens is the tangent edges won't be showing. So you, you probably do want the tangent edges showing. And, of course, we want this in color. And, again, get that position nice and tight in the top left corner of the page. Um, if I go to Annotate, um, we will want a parts list. Select Document and go ahead and select your train. Say Open. Say OK. Say OK when it's the bill of materials view. That's fine. Now, 
this actually does and if you look at my drawings on the board my parts list are just popped on there anywhere by ANSI standard this is something I learned over the past year by ANSI standard that should kind of dock right above the title block okay um, changes to your parts list that you might make um, if you want um, we can insert a custom parts part number 10 would be the straight track um, if your part numbers were say file name and so on um, part 1, part 2, part 3 then train body should be under description. Um, if your part numbers are the, basically the description of the part, then if we go over here to column chooser, we probably want to remove the description. A column that would be good to add in this case would be the material. And then all of our materials show up. The only one that didn't was uh, the straight track, which is uh, wood. Yours might be plastic. Of course, as soon as I added that custom part, now it uh, there. There we go. But again, that should dock. That should dock right in the bottom right-hand corner of the part of the uh, title block. Um, the very first view what we brought in was the train IPN. If your project title is not populating, if you go to train IPN and we go to I, I properties, of course you could also do this just with a text box. Um, I'm not sure where this might be populating on the new version of this file. Um, might be populating with the drawing file. I properties projects train. Not sure what's populating this. If we can't figure it out, you can always put a, a text box in. Train working drawing. IED. It can be done with I properties, but if you have trouble figuring out which one is working, that's fine. And again, at this point, um, remember all those parts lists. Um, we have the balloons that go with the exploded view. And that labels for people that aren't sure what's what, what parts are what. So we use a balloon. And again, those balloons are leader lines. So they're never horizontal, never vertical. They'll pop into place. We'll, we'll right click again and then left click and continue. Um, the other thing you want to make sure, I'll do the next one wrong. Uh, if you look at this one, my leader head is on top of the object. So you want to make sure when you're selecting and placing your balloons on, um, put your balloons at, uh, point them, get them started on an outside object line. And to make it look good, you kind of keep things at consistent angles and so on. Okay, but you'll notice all of those go with the um, that, that goes in line, the balloons go along with the uh, parts list. Okay, so you can finish putting the balloons. Now you don't put, you only put a balloon on one axle, you don't put a balloon on every axle. So you only need to label, you know, for example, you would only label each part once.
okay so that's how you do the balloons and uh, that gets us started on the drawing we'll pick up from here with the next video